Uh, I want to talk about more about uh, so-called mail enablers and their ilk. Um, the reason why I'm making this is that sporadically, yet with increasing frequency, I have been noticing comments on my channel, as well as other uh, MRAs, and in real life, that a couple of arguments that are trotted out, um, mostly by men, almost exclusively by men, um, because it's a very it's a fine distinction, but there are many men who acknowledge the uh, deception and wickedness uh, that can often occur uh, on the part of women, yet uh, they acknowledge it as unjust, as uh, inappropriate, and yet they simply, simply uh, state something to the effect of, usually along these lines, just the way they are, and shrug their shoulders and proceed to uh, say that that's why you can't do anything about it. No, that's what they say. They uh, condone it, in more or less, uh, despite acknowledging it. Now, there are all kinds of extreme analogies I can make here, and I'll start with one. I mean, it's like uh, saying, saying someone who has some sort of neurological condition which uh, induces him or her to engage in psychotic, murderous behavior, murdering dozens of people each week. Let's say some neurological reason he or she is compelled to do so. I mean, you could always just say, well, it's just the way he is, or the way she is, right? Nothing, nothing we can do about that. And yet, generally speaking, the consensus is that we should do something about it in the sense of stopping that individual. But we don't do that with regards to women, because that's just the way they are. Um, this is, uh, there are a couple of uh, points I want to address, but this is something, I think, by far the most common. Uh, this is the way they are. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, or, the slight variation is, um, you know, there should be something done about it, but there's nothing you can do about it, i.e., your attempts to defend yourself or to decouple uh, females from positions of power are in vain. You know, the pessimist in me, and believe me, there's a lot of pessimism, or rather cynicism in me, would agree with that to some extent, but I've often said this, you know, a wild animal, a wild, a uh, big cat, you know, a lion, a tiger, a jaguar, uh, that's starving, you know, might attack you in the hopes of, uh, you know, garnering a bit of flesh, a bit of meat for itself, and um, you could just Throw, it, throw up your arm and say, oh, I'm going to do the Jaguar a favor. That's just, you know, it's the way it's just following its nature, and there's nothing I can do. Um, of course, a Jaguar uh, would most likely overwhelm nearly any human male, uh, no matter how strong he might be. Jaguars, uh, incidentally, have the uh, one of the uh, strongest uh, grip spites uh, of the animal kingdom, certainly amongst the large cats, I mean, they, they're, they're famous for this, so you don't have a good chance against a jaguar, but you still should defend yourself to the extent that you can. Who knows what might come of it? I, I see some sort of similarity with uh, defending yourself against uh, feminism and uh, a, good, a, good lean, a good number of women. Uh, you know, m maybe nothing will come of it, but uh, you better be damn sure that I and others will try to. Um, simply giving up is not an option, um, because we know if we give up and do nothing, that precisely nothing will happen. At the very least, if we offer resistance and increasing numbers of men are doing that, um, something might happen. Um, in particular, the resistance in the form of withdrawal and detachment. There's nothing they can do unless they use uh, state course of power or use some of their male enablers to inflict violence upon you, to prevent you from leaving their sphere of influence. So that's kind of my answer, that uh, it's just the way they are. Well, fair enough. Um, unfortunately, the, it's just the way they are with, the, with its uh, slight variations is strongly attached to um, the addiction factor. Now, Barbara also once talked about 
male addiction to sex, female sex, to the vagina, as being something more than that. that men seem to seek some sort of motherly comfort or something along those lines. I go a little bit further than that. Through my experiences uh, and conversations in real life, and, I, I, I mean, and I'm, I'm not being hyperbolic now, I think many men see females, or the acquisition of a female beyond the sex aspect, and that's undeniable, as a figure of salvation, essentially, that, that a, the partnership with a female, um, as fictive as it is in, 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 its actual, um, in its actual composition, the partnership, the relationship, it, it's, it's, a, it's something that brings salvation. And that salvation can only be sought and can only be found in uh, female partnership. And so, despite all the information out there, despite all the warnings, despite the experiences, the quest for the Holy Grail, as it were, the quest has continued, and it never ends. Um, you know, I was uh, chatting, I'm not going to reel his name, with a guy on a, on a, multi, a multiplayer game once, we just got to talking about things, and it happens to be that he's in his 30s and unemployed, and it happens to be that he has to live with his family for those reasons, and it happens to be that he has found some woman who apparently doesn't revere his money because he lacks it anyway, and he's broke, and so on and so forth. But the reverent tones he spoke of, in addition to saying that, you know, this is just it's our biology, we need this, and so on and so forth, seemed to enforce this, this idea that we, that, that, that men can, can indeed find some form of salvation in the female. Now, uh, I guess it really depends on what your definition of salvation is. Harbinger, a character in the Mass Effect universe, uh, famously said that uh, we are your salvation through destruction. So, I suppose destruction, in, in, a, in a form of total destruction, is a release from uh, whatever problems might be plaguing you. But, um, Unless people really and honestly want to conflate annihilation with uh, salvation, I don't know what they're talking about. Um, but this is what I want to get at, that the, 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 this notion of, uh, of the addiction really goes well beyond the sex act. It, it is a perception men have, um, once again, that females are, are angelic or infallible. And no doubt, this is to some extent hardwired in our biology, but reinforced, obviously, very strongly, very intensely by the society we live in. Um, and when you perceive a cre any creature as an object of salvation, you are liable to do some pretty stupid things if the acquisition of that object uh, in your eyes, in your mind, can lead to personal salvation to a resolution of all problems. Well, I, I, that would, in fact, be worthwhile pursuing if it actually were real, but it's not. And I, and I hear this very often. Men need women. What does that really mean? Well, if you break down men need women. Men need women. Uh, one, it's an indication of addiction. Yes, they need them like any other substance. But also that you know, without women, there is no salvation. Without women, there is no uh, deliverance. It's actually quite the opposite. As we move along this, uh, in the early stages of the century, that the quicker, the more quickly, and the faster we detach ourselves from our notion that there is salvation to be found in the bosom of a woman, uh, the closer we do come to deliverance, at least in this plane of existence. And uh, that is why uh, you simply cannot afford to not combat female nature. You cannot simply just sit back and say, well, that's just the way they are. You have a right to defend yourself against a rabid, wild animal. Um, why wouldn't you have the right to defend yourself against pernicious female behavior, even if it is biological? And once again, biology should, uh, by all accounts, never be a justified excuse. As long as we run a society that is consequentialist in its morality, where the, there's a cause and effect, and the actions, the products of, 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 of the causes, as it were, the results, 
are more heavily weighed than anything else, then uh, you simply you cannot just fall back on the biology line and say, well, yeah, I'm not going to deny that, obviously. I think to some extent, we, uh, I am a biological determinist, and, some, and a, great, a great deal of our behavior is determined by innate biology reinforced by uh, society and um, social structures and, and group cohesion. But that's not an excuse for just lying down your back and taking it. Um, that just those arguments are uh, not very good. Um, and finally, to the many male enablers I meet, and it's sad to say, but at least passively, I think I have some friends who are officially male enablers. I can only ask, what are you afraid of? I mean, be, if you actually, well, I can understand if, if you've reached the point where you think of uh, a vagina will provide ultimate salvation to you, then uh, I suppose on some very bizarre level it makes sense. But generally speaking, if, if your only fear is the fear of loss of access to a vagina, I can assure you that, uh, you know, wanking off, it's in a lot of ways a lot better. For one, you don't have to deal with the stress, it doesn't cost money. Uh, I personally, you know, I can count the, the number of women I had actually good sex with on half a hand in my uh, life. So you're not really missing out on much. Uh, it's more the perception than anything else, right? Um, half the time you you might have uh, sex with women and just think, what the hell is that? What's the, what was the point? Of course, you ended up spending you know fifty dollars or fifty euros in the process in order to, to get access to it. My only question, once again, is what are you afraid of? Nothing will happen to you if you lose access to a vagina. And if you think clearly, just for a second, that, please, a woman is not a source of deliverance nor a source of salvation. Um, at best, my, much like the character Harbinger, she is your salvation through destruction. And it is your destruction, not hers, that she will bring about. Um, male enablers are unfortunately prolific. Uh, I, I work with them at work, unfortunately. I deal, I have a colleague at work. Uh, I find him rather irksome. Uh, he, that's all he can talk about. See, the work I do is, um, sort of half manual labor, half uh, seeing a computer doing translation correspondence. I do both. I work for a sports nutrition company. And um, when I'm doing the manual stuff, I have to incessantly listen to this guy who has all these pictures stored in his mobile, and these women that he finds hot. It, not only is it boring, it's just it, it's rather boorish and, and tiresome. Um, and uh, you know, the enabling can be on all... You know, I decided to finally shave today, uh, just because it was my beard was getting itchy. That was the only reason, mind you. But I, I have repeatedly heard comments of how I looked. Uh, what would be the term in English? My, my English is getting rusty these days. Uh, so a bit um, uh, un, so simply un, uncared for. Uh, not not that I'm taking care of myself, I and mean, that's a bad thing. I mean, I don't really care. One of the nice things about my current job is uh, there, there's less than a dress code. I can literally show up there with a sweatshirt, a hoodie, and, and um, a jogging trousers uh, because I'm either working in a warehouse or I'm sitting on a computer communicating with people abroad and doing translation. So anyway, but you know it's very subtle sometimes. But the idea there is implied is that I need to I need to care as a male about my appearance because if I don't, uh, of course, I won't give female attention. And uh, my goal, at least these days, is to get as le little female attention as possible. So I can only think that's healthy. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the, the fear of loss of access to females in general, whether it's for reasons of salvation or uh, just think that not having sex with a female for, for an extended period of time will somehow ruin your life, um, it, it is devastating. I mean, the impact of, of men who think that way, um, and the, the, the levels to which they will sink, uh, things that they were, they're unwilling to concede, or if they do concede, as I said at the beginning of this video, are willing to just say, well, that's just the way they are. Um, as I said many times, a rabid pit bull, a rabid pit bull uh, is just the way it is, too, um, but you would take measures to defend yourself against it. Um, 
radical measures, I might add, and likewise it is the case with feminists and with females. Um, you simply cannot afford not to. Um, and, you know, Einstein is so hackneyed, but as you know, famously said, allegedly, that, you know, uh, definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, uh, getting, getting the same result. Well, uh, how's that working out for you guys, male enablers? You you doing your relationships? You doing your uh, marriages? How's that working out? You on your marriage? Your marriage number three, marriage number four, relationship number seven? Has it ever worked out? How many times did you initiate the breakup, and how many times did she initiate the breakup? What were her reasons? Did she cheat on you? Did you end up spending a lot of money on her? How many times did you spend up uh, end up spending a lot of money on her? These are the questions you should ask yourself, and ask yourself, male enablers. If you are indeed in a cycle of insane repetition, exactly what Einstein was talking about, if he indeed said that. Um, if you find yourself in a cycle of insane repetition, the answer to that is not to simply say, that's just the way it is. Um, that would be okay if we were hamsters in a cage and we lacked the cranial matter to do anything beyond run in a wheel and uh, chew on carrots. But I think we're somewhere beyond that, and so we need to think a little bit more about what we've done and the actions uh, we've engaged in and yes think about your past relationships um, it's very elucidating and I can only recommend it that you think about your relationships with women and what happened and uh, do not reflexively look for blame in yourself yes we all make mistakes but I think the mistakes that you made uh, will be quite different to them to the ones you you, you initially believe that you so say, in, for example, in my last relationship, I very clearly made mistakes, but they weren't mistakes with regards to my behavior towards the female. They were mistakes uh, in the sense that I, the, in the sense of ill that I committed towards myself by accommodating the female in a way that just should have never, should have never have been done. Um, so, yeah, keep on asking yourself when you're in a relationship 10 or 20 and marriage 3 or 4, uh, how's that working out for you? Um, because... At some point in time, uh, it, it has to, you know, the light bulb has to go off in your head. Uh, it's going to light up. I don't know. Um, but ultimately, ultimately, it's a final, a final note. The cost benefit. You, you will reach the point, I assure you, every man will, where you have been shat on so often and what, where the, the salvation has been perdition has been routinely a, a form of earthly perdition, that you will reach the point where um, you might continue saying that's just the way they are, and you will withdraw despite that. And as I said, withdrawal is a very effective attack, a tactic, um, simply not dealing with them. I don't run around in real life uh, talk, you know, shouting at women and saying, I just keep quiet and mind my own business. I don't engage them. I have no illusions that I'm making a big uh, contribution because tons of other guys are going to run after these women. But um, certainly, I, uh, I have withdrawn my support, and I would suggest that you do so too. Um, by enabling, be it by being a male enabler, you are actually hurting not just your fellow men, and if you're completely selfish, then by all means. Um, but think about yourself. You're hurting yourself too. Every time you spend unnecessary money on a woman, every time you engage in, in meaningless banter with her, because usually conversations with women are, in, are incredibly insipid and boring, and uh, are limited to, uh, well, we all know what they're limited to usually, either blaming you, shopping, things along those lines. Uh, think about it. Um, I'm trying to be kind here and, and rather than just angry, but think about it. Think about the enabling that you're doing and think about uh, this lame excuse that this is the way they are. Um, next time you're chased by a rabid animal, uh, if you actually believe that, then don't, don't run away from it. Just you know, just stand there, lie down there, and let it chew you to pieces. Because that's effectively what you're advocating, male enablers. Um, and, yeah, salvation, <sighs> if there is any sort of earthly salvation, um, it's going to be found in the opposite direction. But we know that perdition can indeed be found in the bosom of a woman. Um, if you're a masochist, I guess that's where you're going to look for it. Anyway, thanks for watching.